the state of natural language processing. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Dr. Aya Sofer, Vice President of AI Technologies at IBM Research AI. Welcome, Dr. Sofer. Hi, Tanya. Give us a brief summary of your background, especially as it relates to AI and natural language processing, if you will. Okay. Uh, I've been working in this area, uh, generally speaking, of natural language processing and search and technologies and so on for over 20 years now uh, at IBM Research. My PhD was also in an adjacent area on indexing and searching on images. And this is probably before we were now all calling, you know, this area of NLP AI. Um, so our quest to understand textual information and find useful information is pretty, pretty old. Uh, but what's interesting is really the change of the technology over time. So when I started in this area, we were focused a lot on traditional information retrieval technology. And over the last few years, what really emerged is the usefulness of machine learning and most recently deep learning to really uh, improve and push the boundaries on our ability to understand language in a very significant way. Um, and personally, I had the opportunity to work on the Watson project when we did the original Watson Jeopardy. Um, so me and my team here in Haifa provided the capabilities to do the search for Watson to then find the right answers to the questions. And then more recently, out of the lab here in Haifa and my AI team here, we did Project Debater, which again, uh, the intent was to even further explore how we can get a machine to really understand humans in a, in a meaningful way. Where do you see natural language processing for enterprise going in the next few years? What's the goal? Our goal at the end of the day is to be able to communicate with humans. So we need, as an enterprise, to communicate with people. Um, most of the organizations need to be able to communicate with their customers or with their employees, or if you're a constituency with your citizens. And therefore, this idea of how can we have better channels of communication uh, and automating them is a very, very, you know, one big important area. Uh, of course, we'd love to have all humans, you know, chatting with all the customers. That's not always possible. And therefore, automation in a way that is very productive on the one hand and is reasonable in terms of our investment to get it up and running on the other hand, yet still humane and accurate and knows what it doesn't know and can, you know, pass it on to a human is one important area that I think we're going to get better and better at really balancing between what we can do with an AI to help our employees or customers versus where we really need to bring in the humans to take care of our customers. And the other big area is the amount of information inside organizations and being able to extract insight out of that remains a very you know, big issue in every single organization. And this could be if we want to, again, help our uh, customers or employees just find answers to their questions or solve their technical support problems. And it could also be in big financial institutes, contracts, uh, lots and lots of documents. And one of the big challenges we see there is that these inf this information is locked in these PDFs that we suffer from every single day a lot of information. So really, I see us being able to understand the language of the business in a meaningful way, uh, where we take into account the complexity of the documents, as well as um, being able to do this, by the way, in multilingual is another big problem that we face because we as IBM and many big companies uh, work in many different places and you cannot afford to retrain and do everything for every single language. So can we find ways that are able to come up with some representations that can go across languages. So we train once and can then deploy things in many, many languages. Um, so these are some of you know, the areas I would say we see as uh, key ones that we need to tackle and, and figure out over the next few years. 
Do you see the strongest NLP use cases being customer facing for internal support or both? I would say both. I think a lot of it is, I can tell you inside IBM as an example, we have many uh, chatbots and you know these virtual agents that help us on some of our internal tasks like an HR bot and a, a travel bot uh, and, and things along those lines. But obviously we want to also help uh, customers who are coming to the IBM website or our customers, you know, the customers of IBM's customers help their customers. So working with many telcos, many financial institutions, insurance companies. So I, I believe it's both. Every organization needs to somehow help their own employees, uh, but mostly it's about the customers and about uh, co people coming to the organization um, and needing to find information or to get technical support uh, or to decide what they want to buy and, and so on and so forth. What are some of the challenges that we face in enterprise and LP today? Okay, so I talked about, for example, one of the challenges was this idea, the fact that we have many multiple formats of documents and in these documents, the information, by the way, is often hidden, not only in the text. So it's really not just understanding the language, but understanding the language of the documents. For example, you may have tables, you may have diagrams, you may have graphs, you may have figures. A lot of the information is locked into those. So a big focus area for us, for example, is being able to extract tables and then not only to extract the table, but to really understand the underlying information behind that table, where all we see is you know, what we as humans would see, which is the labels on the columns and the rows and really translating that into something that could then be useful to answer a question as an example. So that's one challenge. Uh, multilingual, as I said, how do we really get to the point that we can do things in many, many languages without needing to train our models for every single language? So that's another big area for us. Knowledge is another interesting one. Uh, in addition to the information that's in the documents or in our websites or whatever, there's a lot of knowledge that is basically hidden in other systems inside the organization. Um, these could be the CRMs, they could be databases, they could be our sales figures. So how do we combine the information in these other enterprise resources with our customer or employee facing NLP is another big challenge. And this is really around knowledge, around codifying this knowledge and using that not only to search for information, but then go to the next level, which may be reasoning and using some of the logic that um, a person would use if I would, you know, call you up uh, to get some customer support. You can very quickly look up maybe my previous call and know something about the type of laptop, let's say, that I have at home. So how can we combine that? Like right? really pull out the information out of these sources and bring that to the automation in a reasonable way. Um, so me, as you know, somebody calling in can have your chatbot or virtual agent access all those knowledge sources. So that's, I would say, and, and maybe another one that is really, really important for the enterprise is how do we train all these systems? So in AI in general, this is a big problem. And the number of data scientists out there is not enough and organizations can't really employ. And not only that, data scientists are not necessarily the subject domain experts. Um, so we do have a big focus on making it very, very easy to train our NLP systems with few examples as possible and with easy tools. So we have uh, the idea that you can just come and let's say we show you a few documents and you can like mark them up. Uh, our AI will go and do its own learning and training and maybe come back to you and say, hey, Tanya, here's another sentence. Can you tell me, you know, whether this is, uh, you know, regulation two, three, four, five that just came out or not? And, you know, you'll tell me if it is or it isn't. Or maybe I'll show you a document and say, hey, can you just mark a few here? And then, you know, send our AI and be able to take your subject matter expertise um, without actually turning you into a data scientist and train our new NLP systems, improve them and so on. Uh, and so these are, I would say, you know, a few that we've outlined and kind of where we're focusing from a strategy perspective. What are some of the milestones that we should watch for to mark progress towards those goals? 
That's a, that's a good question. So we, in IBM Research, we have a two-pronged strategy. So one part of our strategy is what we do external, and that is, you know, in terms of our eminence and our publications and leaderboards and things along those lines. Um, so maybe I'll give you one example that we did recently. A uh, question answering is obviously a topic in NLP that people have been trying to solve for many, many years. Uh, and most systems that you see out there today, including the system we built for Watson, are question answering systems and open domain questions. And there's a lot of information. The whole web, there are many, many places you can train for that information. And we now have very, very large language models for open domain. But when you go into an enterprise domain, you don't have that information. And therefore, we really believe that we need to create these new data sets and leaderboards that focus more on the types of problems and the types of questions that you would want to answer in that domain. Um, so to that extent, we recently released something we call TechQA. And this is an external data set and a leaderboard where we have posed the challenge of, okay, here's some really, really hard problems in question answering. Uh, and here are some questions and their answers. Like any other leaderboard, you have a dev test and a, a set and a test set. Um, and by the way, not only that, you're now going to be like a typical enterprise uh, customer. We're not going to give you hundreds of thousands of these examples. We're going to give you a few hundred examples uh, because this is like the real world. And I think that over the next few years, we should see more and more work on trying to solve these more typical real world issues where you don't have that much tra training data, which means you need to do domain adaptation. You need to maybe train your models on that open domain data, but see how you can now use the little new data that I gave you to adopt your models to this new data. Also look at much longer questions and answers. So that I believe will be one area that I hope to see uh, more progress. Uh, also with some of the work we're doing now on neurosymbolic AI and being able to combine um, machine learning and deep learning with more traditional technology around symbolic AI and rules and logic and so on. So I believe the two of these things together, domain adaptation with neurosymbolic, will let us uh, tackle some of these issues around question answering, for example, with fewer data sets and on much harder questions to, to answer needing domain expertise. So, and the second area of focus for us is the products, right? At the end of the day, we advance the state of the art, we publish, we want the rest of the world to maybe worry more about the types of problems that we care about in enterprise NLP, uh, and not only about the topics that people more usually will see them, you know, which are more the, uh, the personal assistants and you know the Alexas and the series of the world, which is what we will typically interact with on a daily basis. So we want to introduce the world to more of the enterprise NLP and get more researchers working on these. Uh, and then we want to contribute to the product. At the end of the day, we need to help IBM and really make sure that our products on the um, enter, you, you know, from enterprise NLP products are able to use our innovation. Uh, and that's where I also expect us to continue to see innovation coming from IBM, uh, influencing more of our product sets and coming out to the market so anybody could then go ahead and integrate these capabilities into their uh, enterprise needs. Uh, one example I could give there, again, is Project Debater, which is maybe the extreme. We built Project Debater as a project that was, you know, to build a computer that can debate with humans. And that was a grand challenge. It was really to advance the state of the art in science. It's not because we thought there is a business use case to debate. Uh, although some people think they want one to, you know, to debate with their significant other and other things like that. But, um, but really the key was the underlying technology. And we are now working with the Watson unit and already have identified several capabilities that are now making their way into our product set to improve, for example, our ability to do sentiment analysis in a much more refined way, to understand the nuance of languages in a, in a much better way, 
uh, a lot of the work we did in Debater was to identify key topics and be able to cluster and find the different themes. So now we're applying that, for example, to call center logs and how can you understand as an enterprise, what are the topics that are maybe emerging through just you know going through the logs in your call center and you can identify perhaps uh, new issues that you have with your product that you weren't even aware of or maybe um, some desire of your customer to have a new type of insurance plan because everybody's asking about this. So we're really trying to take a lot of those and I expect us over the next years to continue to see more of the innovation from IBM Research show up in our products around these different areas. Uh, understanding of the PDF formats, uh, deeper semantic parsing, how do we extract knowledge and do that in an unsupervised way uh, our focus can, is in everything we do is how do we do it with less data and less human effort and lower expertise. So that I will expect us to see over the next few years in, uh, in our product set as well as in our research papers and innovation. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Aya Sofer, Vice President of AI Technology at IBM Research AI. If somebody wants to connect with you, Aya, how can they do that? Best way is on LinkedIn. Just search Aya Sofer on LinkedIn, message me, and I'll answer. Thanks again for joining us. And you can find more of my interviews right here or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.